What is up, everybody? It's your boy Hugh here from Creator Up. I'm at NAB in the booth Voices with Jonathan. Jonathan, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, uh, I'm uh, uh, Jonathan. I founded the company Voices uh, four years ago in 2014. Is that four years? Yeah, that's four years. Uh, and uh, since then, we're build, building the software to do 360 live productions. Uh, and we support multiple cameras, high resolutions, uh, do good stitching, overlays, and all the things you need to actually do a proper multi-camera live production. This is our third year at uh, NAB, uh, and it's really fun. So what we're showing here is a really high resolution uh, 360 multi-camera workflow where you can stitch multiple cameras. Uh, so here we are stitching the Kanda in uh, right now 6K. Uh, the Kanda is uh, all the way up there. So that's is, that is stitched uh, on, the, on this computer. And then we also have this laptop over here, which is uh, stitching a Zcam S1. Uh, right now it's running at uh, 4K, we were running it at 6K earlier today. Uh, something is a bit weird with our, ne our network setup, so uh, we downgraded that, but now everything is stable again. Uh, and so on you say 6K, but like, YouTube only maxed out in 4K, so tell us about how yeah, can you do yeah. 6K? So there are multiple companies that do uh, view-dependent streaming. One of them is uh, YBVR, another one I think is Wisbit. And both of those uh, can handle six, six or, or eight K inputs, and then they will stream only the part of the sphere that the viewer actually look, uh, looks at, which then puts uh, pressure on us to support higher and higher resolutions. So we really have to support six and eight K, because then you get a really, really crisp uh, 360 experience in, in all directions you look at. So if you look at uh, a 90 degree slice uh, at a 10, uh, 1080p screen, that's going to be going to require eight K resolution to be crisp. So in this case, that's what we are showing here. This is our like small 10, uh, 1080p p screen. So let me switch that to the candle, which is the Christmas one. Okay. So now I switch to the candle. Oh, so wait, so your software yeah. comes with a stitcher, uh, the switcher as well? Yeah, yeah. So this is a, a it's an X-Keys uh, switcher board. A good switcher because it's uh, easy to integrate with. So we as a small software company can just buy one and integrate with it. And now our customers can use it to do live productions with our system. So that is switcher and that yeah, is yeah. Kanda. Yeah, yeah. So here is the Kanda output, uh, and uh, here is our uh, small version screen that we have. What is that? Is that a, a it, picture in picture? Yeah, it's an uh, overlay video, a picture in picture that we add to the uh, 360 to give like if if you have it's camera, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's the GH4 over here. So if you have like an ordinary 2D production already, and you want to add a 360 production, you can reuse the audio and the uh, the 2d production inside your 360 to give added value okay so where is the audio input uh, the audio input uh, right now we actually are not running any audio input uh, but since the, this new version we all, all the scenes that you build in in, uh, in the editor we, uh, will have the, their own audio mix uh, where you can select uh, which audio sources you want. So if you, your computer has audio inputs, you can add those. If your camera has audio inputs, you can add those. If you get them through SDI, that will work as well. Okay, so you can, like, let's say in the console, you can pick in the console. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Audio out. Yeah. And with the mixer and then with yeah. the system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you can have, uh, if you're at the concert, you probably have a few mixes that, that you want to use for the different camera positions. And then you can uh, have all of those as inputs. And then you can input, uh, uh, the mix you want for a specific scene to that scene and then uh, uh, when you switch between them all you you will get the correct audio nice so tell what are the real life scenario like what is usually like time we ask for a live stream and how yeah. the solution as a package can deliver yeah, yeah. all that so uh, one typical if you want to stream uh, tennis for example you, you put a few different uh, 360 cameras all around the, the arena and then you add the 2D live feed from, from the TV production, and you add a, a web page for the scoreboard, and then all of that is switched and produced inside our software. Is any camera can use it to your system? Or? Yes, as long as we can get either a, a 360, if the camera stitches, we get a 360 extra rectangular video. Uh, if we get a clean feed from each lens, we can stitch it, and we can stitch any kind of camera rig you can basically build. So the stitching, is that optical flow and what is the algorithm for stitching? It is, for it, it is similar to op optical flow. Optical flow can be seen as an algorithm to figure out uh, the distance. Uh, our method is basically doing uh, two-phase stitching, which is basically 
First, we do a proper calibration of the camera rig, which uh, figures out all the intrinsic parameters, uh, for, uh, like the lens parameters, the position, the orientation. When we have that, we try to figure out the depth around the camera to build a depth map. I can, I can show you that here. Yeah, please do. So in this case, we, we are stitching the candle. So if I view that from the outside, uh, this is what the 3D model actually looks like that we are generating. So if we go into this again, we see that when people are moving, we are actually regenerating the depth map to try to match where they actually are. Where is the depth map? Uh, the depth map is uh, what's uh, distorting the mesh all around you. Got it. Yeah. It... So they can potentially do volume matrix. Yeah, yeah. In the future, when when that uh, resolution, uh, the resolution of the depth map yeah, gets uh, high enough and uh, accurate enough. Right now, it's good enough for stitching. It's not good enough for doing a six stuff yet. But that's something we are actively researching. So what is the price of the voices if people want to use it? Yeah, so uh, most of the time people buy event licenses for 10 days and the price for a single uh, camera production is uh, $600 and the price of a multi-camera uh, high resolution production is uh, $1,200. Is it including the operator or just the software? That's the software license. Okay. So how long will it take people to learn the whole system? <sighs> the whole system it is always expanding, so you will never learn the, everything. Yeah, but okay. uh, uh, to get uh, useful results in uh, a few days. I think it's uh, quite easy to use, but that's, I, I built it, so uh, I'm not an independent judge of how easy it is to use. Okay, uh, so is that available right now? Can people contact you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can get a... The, the current version I'm showing here will be released uh, sometime after NAB. The previous version uh, is available on our website and you can join our faithful user group to download the waterborne version to play around with at home.